Looks like some people are still funneling in, but do you realize why you all are here? <laughs> How has your PAX East been? Awesome. Please forgive me, my voice is going because I've been demoing all night, all day. Uh, my name is John Ritter, I'm from Layways Games. We make a game called Dragoon, if anyone's ever heard of it. Uh, so we are here for one of the most glorious things in the world which is uh, Homestar Runner. Uh, if you were alive before, I would say 1999 sometime, you may remember it. Um, it was a time before YouTube, it was a time before social media, uh, but some, there was an oasis out there, uh, pre-internet, uh, I would say, uh, that was Homestar Runner. So please welcome Mike and Mac Chapman. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming. It's super cool. We, we very rarely do this. I see a lot of dedicated delete heads out there. That is <laughs> fantastic. I tried to look nice. up. I found a place that made like paper hats like you get at Burger King, and I couldn't get them to custom make a delete key to put on your head. <laughs> So I'm still gonna work on it. I'm gonna press them and say that there's a market. There's five five people I saw in a crowd that will buy this. Um, no, it's super cool. We rarely uh, do stuff like this, so it's been amazing to meet a bunch of you guys and to see uh, you guys in this room. What do you say about that, Mike? I say thank you for everyone for following us for some of you 18 years or 15 years or 13 years or 12 years or 10 years or five. For one month. So thank you everybody for um, sort of going on this ridiculous journey that we had no idea 
that it would, 18 years later, we would be still doing stuff like this. So thank you very much for everything. Uh, so since we are at PAX East, uh, I think one thing we want to get into first is uh, talking about uh, how long have games been part of your life and kind of how have they been part of your life before Homestar Runner? Um, games have been part of our life. Mike and I are kind of that perfect age. We had a brother that was 10 years older than, than me, uh, and so we, we still got a lot of the... Um, like all of the 70s culture because he was so much older than us, even if we weren't like conscious for a lot of it. Um, so we had, uh, you know, we had, what was it called? We had uh, Stunt Cycle. Stunt it Cycle was Atari, Atari made it. It was a console that was just one game and the console itself had hand, uh, motorcycle handlebars with a throttle on the right and you just jumped buses and it, you cleared the two buses and then a third bus. How there. many buses, Mike? Uh, <laughs> I can jump, I don't remember. <laughs> Some of my buses. Some of my buses. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped over some of my buses. Did you realize that you were being uh, influenced by Stunt Cycle when you made that Powered by the Chief? That was the first, yeah. So that was probably 77 or 78 when we had that game. And then I do remember having the Atari 2600 and one Saturday night when my parents were gone and our older brother babysat us. And he had actually somehow found, about, found out about the Easter egg on uh, an adventure on um, the 2600, which is sort of the first Easter egg ever, and you find this invisible dot and it shows the creator's name. And I don't know how in 1981 people found out about things like that, but I remember finding the first Easter egg in a video game. Yeah, so we were, got to be around for sort of the birth of all of it, you know, like we got to, we were there and we got to go to arcades, we were there when the Nintendo came out, we bought it for Christmas or whatever, we got Game Boys, we, so it's, we were like that perfect age where we'd gotten to just grow with all of video games. Um, so yeah, sorry, I got freaked out. Um, I thought you said we weren't going to be up there. Um, well, we got to start showing stuff. They don't want to see yeah, this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do all our animation in uh, Google Slides from now on. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll just get right into it. So let me uh, skip around in here. Where's some stuff? So uh, this is a, a King's Quest comic Mike and I made on vacation uh, in, you know, 85. Comic book adaptation, yeah, probably 86, 85, yeah. 86 of King's uh, Quest 1. So uh, if you've ever played Trogdor or Peasant's Quest or know any of that world of Homestar, heavily influenced by the Ken and Roberta Williams uh, series of games. Uh, so I'll just, I'll just go ahead and go through this for you. Just, there's just four pages. There's way more. I won't subject you to it all. <laughs> what, so what, what year was this? Uh, so this is probably from 85? 85 or 86, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, here he is in the, in the top left there. He's, he's pushed over a rock and he says, there is something in this hole. <laughs> and then, oh, wow, this weapon is as sharp a blade as I've seen. This my, I just watched a lot of Monty Python with my dad, and I would just try and <laughs> mimic what I saw. Fine, and now, okay, now he's just thirsty all of a sudden. He found a dagger, and now he's thirsty <laughs> and, and a well. We're trying to adapt all the puzzles from the game into a comic. It's hard to link them. Finally, water. Oomph. <laughs> I'm so dumb. And he falls <laughs> down into the well. Wow, another glowing spot. <laughs> Apparently there was a glowing spot. So this is a something, uh, already we were this big of nerds where there's this part in King's Quest where it defies physics and you swim through the bottom of a well and into just a, a like dry, dry cavern. hole. The water like, hasn't fallen and gone into Yeah, they don't somehow. do the like, you don't swim back up, you just go right through the bottom and then it's just dry. And we were just like, that is, we just, we're calling BS we cannot, on that, I'm sorry. Uh, cannot so, stand for this in our adaptation. Yeah, so uh, thanks to those, uh, what were those smelly markers called? Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks. Thanks to fiddlesticks, we made this rainbow glowing spot. And it's just, I don't know, we don't explain it. You kind of smush through it. It looks like that thing from, from Annihilation. It's the shimmer. <laughs> and you go right through there. <laughs> What's that? Whoa! <laughs> he's not going to find out what it is. He's just going to chuck a dagger at it, like as soon as he sees it. I'm not going to try and reason with that dragon. It is going down. <laughs> And just like, just a lot of blood there. That dragon, by the way, is pretty close to the Ed Emberley dragon in the Ed Emberley's How to Draw Animals book. <laughs> so he, he taught us. He taught us how to start drawing dragons. That was close. The mirror. You had to quest for a mirror. Uh, that's me I, I, as a king. <laughs> and then later, I'm hungry. I think I'll have a walnut. <laughs> this should crack it. And there was, Look there at was, that hand. Yeah, Mike drew that hand. I had to, there's some of these frames where I was like, Mike, I can't draw somebody throwing a hand. You gotta, you gotta take over for me. So that's a Mike frame there for sure. 
so they, so that's that's we were obsessed with video games, making dumb things about them. They had already influenced our like culture and creativity, like the stuff we wanted to make. Um, and then the next thing I'll show you, if you will bear bear with us, um, this has actually been on YouTube for like a decade. Um, I uh, we made a Punch Out movie in 1987. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. And uh, it was t probably 25 minutes long, and it was unwatchable. <laughs> So uh, I, it still is. When I, yes. Well, uh, that that remains to be seen. We'll see. We'll see uh, how. I'll look at the, your faces and I'll stop it if, the, if there's too much cringing happening in the audience. Uh, and so to teach myself Final Cut, I was like, I'm gonna try and make this thing watchable. So uh, I'm still gonna skip around in it because it's still kind of hard to get through. But um, I, uh, I oh, that also uh, later in life we made uh, Doom mods. We made a, we were way up into d Dazed and Confused. We made a Doomed and Confused mod. <laughs> And Slater was the flaming skull, and when he'd f fly at you, he'd go, hey, what's man, what's happening? happening? <laughs> and you'd hear... We uh, did MIDI versions of, like, Sweet Emotion and a couple of the sound songs from the soundtrack. Benny would go, I hope you're wearing more than a jockstrap on a day, you little rat! <laughs> Anyways, all right. <laughs> so, here we go, guys. Uh, I give you 1987, our parents' basement. Uh, punch out the movies. So the, the effects and stuff... Uh, Anything that you might find remotely good about this was done way later. All of the bad stuff was the was original. Punch out the movie. Gosh, I wish I could fight like little Mac. Ladies and gentlemen, in our first match tonight, we have for you. To my left, in the white trunks, Francis Glass Jaw, Glass Jaw! What's happening to your shirt, we Mike? Couldn't be bothered to wear an actual shirt. match here. Von Kaiser, we'll go straight to Von Kaiser. And to my right, in the right <laughs> trunks, challenger, Little Mike was really hitting me really hard. <laughs> Piston Honda! So, so there was that. <laughs> uh, I encourage you to, if you want to try and find it on YouTube, the comments are uh, hilarious because lo lots of people, ha most of the people don't realize this was actually made in 1987, and so they're just like, what sort of terrible phone or camera are you using for that? So now that we've seen your glorious creation process when you were kids, 
Uh, <laughs> how did that it hasn't changed? It hasn't changed at all. Um, with the with the introduction of social media and tools that make stuff like this insanely easier, uh, how did you guys do everything right before Homestar Rudder and leading up to Homestar Runner? So yeah, right before Homestar, I mean, the beginning of Homestar, the first thing we ever animated was in um, Mario Paint for the Super Nintendo. Um, and we were sort of, I don't know, what, what else am I supposed to say about that? Uh, I don't remember. Our plan. We didn't have a plan. This is what the internet looked like back then. <laughs> it ran this chunky too. That's intentional. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot going on. And then, and then Flash came out. Uh, and it kind of changed everything. Because previously, even, even though we could make things like uh, stuff in Mario Paint, then even if we filmed the TV and somehow got the video, it was like, how do you digitize that video? And even if you could big? get it on a computer, right, it has to be this small, or how are you going to afford the bandwidth for it? So, uh, and even, it's funny, looking at this, we were even like, we, I, I think we had it, did we have a yeah, digital camera Yeah, at the time, I yet? remember these pictures of the cheat, it was kind of a big deal because we had just gotten a digital camera, so this is 2002, and at the time, it was still kind of hard to get a photographic image on, just had to scan on it. your computer. If you had to take a picture with a film camera and get it printed and scan it and then put it, you know, put it on a uh, Sony disc, what were those things? Uh, sticks, Sony sticks? <laughs> Memory called? sticks. Memory sticks, yeah. Um, but so anyway, yeah, just getting a photograph on your computer was actually kind of a cool thing. I remember thinking that those pictures of the cheat were just like, wow. So 16. So back then when you were creating Homestar Runner, what types of games did you guys play and how did that influence what you were creating for the site? I mean, I think the look of the site and the look of the world of Homestar Runner has been heavily influenced by video games. Our cartoons are basically side-scrolling, and they've got the blue sky and green hills background of uh, Mario, Mario Brothers and those types of um, you know, Nintendo and Super Nintendo era platformers. It's true. So that uh, just the aesthetic of the whole thing has been heavily influenced by that. And then once we started making cartoons, it was kind of hard not to just let all that stuff uh, seep into it. So uh, we, we were huge Activision aficionados as kids. Uh, I never won any patches, but I definitely uh, took pictures of high yeah, scores. To try and... I think Sequest is still my favorite game of all time. Yeah. It's really good. So we decided to invent a, a, a company, a fictitious company, that we could then have an excuse to make bad video games on our cartoon, even though it had nothing to do with our cartoon. Uh, so we invented Vidalectrix. <laughs> Specializing. I sometimes forget what type of graphics we make at Vidalectrix. Yeah, but Matt he has a hard quick time. Quick to remind me. Mm -hmm. I said good graphics. <laughs> I have to come in every day and look at this mess. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, what else was coming out, right? When we first lived together, Mike and I were doing the website. We lived in an apartment together. Um, it was right between uh, N64, N64 and, and GameCube. GameCube yeah. um, so we were way into uh, like Majora's Mask, which was kind of the lovely swan song for N64. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then we got into, and then we all had uh, Game Boy Advances too. Um, and we were way into, I, th I think that the first WarioWare micro mini games incorporated, or whatever it's called. <laughs> Still might be one of my, way in the top five, possibly, of the video games that, uh, that I like. Um, so, and I think that, um, just those short nuggets, like it was perfect, like of content, and it played that sort of style, translates really well to content on the web, especially at that time. Even, even if it was, though it was Flash and it was Vector, you still may, maybe had to make a game, a mini game, to watch or play while you loaded this, you know, 175K file. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I think that, uh, that, that definitely seeped into all of that. Um, yeah. Do you want to show the Wario? Don't say, um, yeah, do you want to? Okay, well, so, uh, so Wario, where this is sort of di diverging, is this okay to, uh, so we love Wario, where, and then we somehow missed, I don't know if it was just with, we had kids and stuff or what was happening, but we just missed Wario, where DIY entirely, and we fortunately found out about it a few months ago, right before, <laughs> like, the Wii Shop channel stopped, like, letting you download its companion app. Uh, so we both bought it, and uh, we've been busy uh, making games. It's funny, because uh, Jonathan was just like, oh, so you, got, you made these back in the day? And we're like, no, we made these like last week. <laughs> <laughs> and we can literally only share them with each other. Yeah. Uh, so here's a little compilation that we outputted from the Wii. Uh, and then Mike's got his DS here. We've got a webcam. We can maybe show you if, if this doesn't cover everything. Um, you'll, you'll recognize some faces, some fun faces. <laughs>
it's a, it's a tech demo. This is an, en an endless gonna have to jumper. I didn't get very far on that one. That one's unfinished. <laughs> but that lamp is uh, moving. That's a nice thing to ask off of. Oh, there's a, a demo of the Trapdoor game. Do you have anything else, Mike, that, that uh, we didn't show see. It's on your DS? Not, let's see, I did start to make a strong bad zone one, but I didn't get very far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that one. Oh, there it goes. You died. Here it goes again. Here, back it up a little bit so it's, it zoom, it, it's out of focus. Strong bad zone. This webcam, there we go. All he does is move back and forth. <laughs> it's very exciting to make games. You're like nothing, stuff. Explode. <laughs> anything else? Uh, anything great? I don't think anything great, for oh. sure. What about just your face? Let's just look at your face. <laughs> That's pretty great, right? I thought you had more in there. All right, we'll, just, know, we'll just turn you, that I right off. I gave you pretty much everything. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, got something else? One more. It doesn't do anything, but I was working on um, how to make thy Dungeon Man style uh, amber graphics. You can it froze. See. It froze. It froze. They can see it. <laughs> it's really that. See, finally, you make yeah. me some good graphics. <laughs> <laughs> After 18 it's an years. Eyeball. Oh, that one did have a game. You just have to turn the eyeball red. You tap it three times, and then the eyeball turns red. Pretty fun, huh? Frantic eyeball gameplay. Uh, what else, John? <laughs> yeah, Can we're steer done. Us? We're, we're out. way over here. Can you steer us? Yeah, back? I, I got we you. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So, uh, back when you created the game, created Home Star Runner, and you're doing all this crazy stuff, uh, you had a ton of fans, a lot of which are here. Uh, Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. How have you stayed connected with those fans, brought in more fans, utilized social media? Like, that social media didn't exist back then. It does now. Like, what do you do current day? We in go the, to in the day that once Flash every might 10 die. years. <laughs> uh, no, so back then, uh, we always, and this is a fine approach for other people, we were very much not into the, like, we wanted a creator section of the website where you, you know, we blogged about how hard it is making Flash cartoons, and oh, look, I, you know, slipped on coffee this morning, get 12 million subs. Um, 
so no, we were, uh, we just wanted to focus on the content. We just wanted to make new stuff. If we had time to spare, we figured it should be spent on making new stuff for people that would enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, weekly cartoon was sort of the other way of doing things. That if we had sort of engaged and done a bunch of, uh, gone to a bunch of cons and stuff, I think it would have prevented us from being able to make the yeah, so, I mean, content we make. So we chose to make content and focus on that. Which now a weekly cartoon is like the, the chumpiest schedule uh, for production, apparently, <laughs> according to the current cycle of YouTube life. It's just like, sorry, it's been five minutes. Did you didn't make a new cartoon? No. Um, unsubscribe. <laughs> so now, now in your spare time, because you, you're not making content. Uh... <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put up a new cartoon last week. Yeah, man. Oh. No, 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 no. What, what oh, games? Do you, what games dozen. do you? What games do you guys play currently? What besides WarioWare? Uh, <laughs> not much. I'm mostly Nintendo. I got, a, I've got yeah. a Switch, so I play Mario Odyssey and with my daughter and um, yeah, mostly. Yeah, mostly we always Nintendo buy games, whatever new new uh, console Nintendo puts out. Um, I sometimes buy. I have a PS4 and I got No Man's Sky and uh, I I've played it a little bit. Um, I don't have a ton of time. Like, there's so many awesome yeah. games. Like, uh, so we stay in the sort of indie realm because they're like, they're, they're, the sensibility just feels like uh, closer to us. And then also they're just usually bite-sized. There's a smaller team, so the game has to be smaller. So I have time to actually play it and finish and enjoy it. So um, instead of playing games, you're actually working on a game. But is it kind of a secret, but not really? Not really at all, I guess, at this point. I don't know. Does anybody here know about it? It is not a video game. No. It is a board game uh, with this guy. Uh, so Mike and I, uh, we were late to the tabletop thing. I mean, we were always had a few games you know, in the cabinet, but, uh, but it wasn't really until we had kids and wanted to start playing games with our kids. And we're like, what's the current gaming landscape like for tabletop stuff? And got into like, Ticket to Ride and Machi King Koro to and King of, King of Tokyo. Tokyo and, and, yeah, exactly. And that just sort of opened the floodgates. And then now we're in like a, you know, we still on season one. We, and we're, we're, the world is in horrible shape and pandemic season one. But <laughs> we have like a group that meets with that. We do Risk Legacy. And so we're, we're, much, we're still not like, we're still learning. And, and, and anyways, so this stuff is in the front of our brains. And we were, we, we were walking around LA after some uh, uh, LA some meetings. Gross meetings. And, uh, and just started talking about like, we should make a game. And we started, and by the time we got home, we just started 3D printing prototypes and printing out cards. And we started banging out this Trogdor game. Um, so it's sort of an adaptation. It's the board game adaptation of the video game adaptation <laughs> of the song from the cartoon <laughs> that a pretend wrestle man sang. 15 years ago. Um, we say it's a, it's a game of burnination, cooperation, and peasantation. Uh, my daughter came up with that, actually. Uh, and, uh, and so, yes, yeah, so it's cooperative. You're all Trogdor, because no one can actually control Trogdor, so you're all, you each assume the role of a keeper of Trogdor, and uh, you each have different powers, and you move Trogdor around peasantry. The tiles are flippable uh, and turn burninated on the other side. As you can see, the cottages are flippable, too. They have the fire on the inside. Um, peasants wear this flaming helmet and then leave a path of, like, chaos and, and fire after you move them. Uh, and uh, we, we've uh, demoed it the last few days thanks to Kickstarter they, and their Kickstarter Couchland. And um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, it seemed like everyone had a lot of fun. They were either the nicest uh, playtest demo people and were just leaving. It was like, oh my God, that was horrible. <laughs> Did you see? And uh, or, which is like, that's okay too. I'll take that. Um, but it seems like people were into it, so we're hoping. It's still uh, in development. We're working with James Ernest from Cheap Ass Games, um, who made Tack. He made uh, Kill Dr. Lucky, which is a fantastic reverse clue where you're, you're all trying to murder one guy uh, in, a, in, a, in a mansion, which is super fun. Um, so Mike and I brought him like a, uh, it had all the elements, like we brought him these cards and these movement stuff, and, uh, and then he is helping us uh, undo all of the like no-nos that we did in board gaming. Um, and so we're going to kickstart this late summer is the hope. And uh, so which, uh, because, so uh, that's, uh, these are all 3D printed prototypes you see here of the knights and peasants in Trogdor. Um, this is some uh, box art. This is like the first rough. He like cranked this out in like a half an hour. His name is Chris Schweitzer, who uh, he does the Krogan's series. He does uh, the Creeps, which is this, uh, 
um, cool kids um, graphic novel, and then what's his what's his blog? He, has, he does this awesome Schweitzer craft. He makes these like paper craft like things, and he's going through history and drawing different um, like warriors throughout history. So he was perfect for this. Um, and uh, and then yes, yeah, so we're doing <laughs> we're doing a, <laughs> we're doing a kick cheater. Uh, and so that's what the, the, the like sculpt will look like. So the, the, it will take a while to produce because we want the Trogdor to not just be a mini, we want it to be a full color uh, vinyl figurine that you'll get. Uh, some of the peasants and things will be a little, not, not bad quality, but just not quite as fancy. Um, we got the guy who did all of our old um, figurines. I'm gonna let Mike finish this sentence because I keep talking. <laughs> the guy that did our figurines 15 years ago, Rick Van Velser, he, uh, kind of stopped doing uh, sculpting toys. And so we called him and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. And so he got out all his wax and tools and sculpting stuff. And I think he enjoyed getting back into it and doing sculpts. So he's done Trogdor and the flaming running around peasants. These are, these are on the Gone fire. The archers, um, Mendelev and Dongolev. A flaming cottage and then some nice That's the trog hammer. He comes out and we say that uh, it, after a series uh, point in the game, he comes out and makes it harder and he's like the um, board game equivalent of the Mario music getting faster in the last 90 seconds. What else, Mike? Do we have some, we have some friends below the table that might want to say oh, hi. Oh yeah, we can always do that. <laughs> It sounded like a weird euphemism, and it is <laughs> <laughs> not intended that way. First, this this guy's been stuck in a uh, in a suitcase for like Mike. Mike went camping right before this, so this guy's been stuck in a suitcase for like a week and a half, maybe, and he's he's not doing so good. Um, <laughs> In, in addition to the fact that I've been speaking uh, like strong bad for three or four days in a row now, um, well, I'll just, I'll just let you listen. Hey, guys. <laughs> Things are going so great for me right now. I've fallen on some hard times. Can somebody give me a sandwich? How you doing, Pax East? It's so nice to see you guys. I don't have arms or I would move my eyes to happy eyes. <laughs> but this is all you get. I'm so sorry, you guys. I wish I sounded like myself. I've been smoking 12 packs a day. I'm so stressed out for being in packs. It's like that suitcase. They wouldn't let me out. And now they're making me go back under the table. Are you expecting something else? <laughs> uh, here, why don't we? I always say it's, it's best to, to give our friend Strongbad some ammunition. Uh, so where are we here? So I thought I would uh, play you guys uh, right before Homestar Runner. Uh, what, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're good. We're good. We got 20, All right. 8 minutes. Uh, I, I went to film school, and this was, I graduated in 19, 1998, and so uh, it was before digital film was really a thing that you could afford. Um, I moved back to Atlanta, it was before they filmed all of the Avengers movies in Atlanta, and you could get no kind of film work in Atlanta. Um, and I was like, I just really wanted to create, I wanted to make stuff. And then also all my other friends hadn't, gra I got to graduate six months early, so like uh, nobody else I knew was in town to even collaborate or make anything with. And um, I was way into Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight at the time. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so I got into uh, to level uh, editing and modding. And I found that it was like, wait, I can make cutscenes. I can put in my own sound clips. I can put in my own textures. Like, I can, I can make films with this. So um, I put out a, a, a little level called The Mechanics of the Force. And, which is a play on words because you're a droid that gets the force. <laughs> so I was like, I was messing with Star Wars canon way before Ryan Johnson. Like I was, I was being, committing some uh, serious, uh, what do you call it? 
What's the sacrilege? That's the word I'm looking for. Anyways, uh, I, it, it's terrible, and so I figured I'd let uh, Strongbad uh, ha uh, have a go at it. The audio is real low, so don't don't sweat. Okay, this is really quiet. Is there supposed to be? Man, there's some serious aliasing happening there. Whoa, what's that? A giant metal space whale. A freighter delivers a load of droids to a smelting facility on Bayok 4. That sounds like a made-up Star Wars word. Oh, there it goes. That planet is clearly 2D. Whoa! Whoa, where am I? Oh, no! Oh, look at all these droids. They're dying in a pit. Where, where are we? The texturing is terrible in here. Oh, look, these guys, goat face, shoot them up, Dan. Oh, I got them. Okay, let's see, a lot of panels. I wanted every panel to do something. None of the panels in video games do anything. That one makes explosions. This one makes droids. Put them together. Sorry, R5, D4. Let's see, where are we going? Oh, I blew that guy away, going here. Uh, I wonder what's in there. <laughs> oh, that door doesn't work. In case you couldn't read, I guess. Memory banks, I've got to find a way in there. I really was hand-holding. Oh, this makes gonk droids. Yes! <laughs> this is the best factory ever! <laughs> More gonk droids! Let her rip! Press, 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 Oh no, a couple survived. There we go. Take them out. What's in here? Let's see. Oh, a cutscene. Look at this smooth rotating camera. Darn. Moving on some serious angles there. It looked like they, they killed a Jedi in there. Waste these guys. Oh, they in, oh, ah, what's happening? Oh, I'm dead. Look at that sweet custom skin. I just used other like textures from the game and stuck them on the normal model. Whoa, that's a custom GIF. Wireframes of some droids. Oh, there's a droid on that side. A little R5 in there. And, oh, and, and a protocol droid. Let's see what happens if we press this button over here. Ah! What's happening? Oh my god! It made an abomination! What sick sort of factory is this? Now where are we? Where, what is this? Pictures of like the employee of the month? Here at the smelting facility? 17 days without blowing someone up with a thermal detonator. Oh, stored data, more, more custom gifts that are really chunky looking. To be bulk erased, oh no! You are a protocol droid whose memory had been erased. Let's see, let's see what these sweet memories look like. I smell cutscenes. Okay, this is a pretty boring life. Okay, he had an orange droid. He just stood around with these two guys? His whole life? That's it, he just stood in circular rooms with a Jedi and an old guy. That's all he did. This poor droid, he had a terrible life. All right, let's skip to the end, you guys. This is the best part. Cargo magnet on, let's turn it off. <laughs> there we go. All right, that was the best part, all right. I. That's a pretty terrible level. But at least it had a, a, a good grand finale. Hi, Pax, guys. Thanks for, thank you guys for coming out. Strong bad. What? I'm eating lozenges for sustenance. This is my fourth one today. The first two were breakfast, and this is my lunch. That's great. Will somebody get Mike some lunch? No. It's <laughs> not what I'm saying, but I keep oh, talking okay. Hey, Jonathan, what's going on, man? I'm going to do some Q&A. Some Q&A? Q&A. You guys want to talk to humans and or puppets? 
puppets. We don't run them. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to line up at the mic right here. Walk, don't run, walk, don't run, walk, don't run. Um, we're gonna get a couple in, hopefully. We get a little bit of time. Uh, so your question for Mike, Matt, or Strong Bad, uh, whoever's first. Michael Hope B someone is doing great. Michael B. Hope, powered by the Chief uh, Home Star. Oh. Oh. What's that? Oh. We have gifts. A traveler approaches. <laughs> Thank you so much. This isn't going to explode, is it? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You might want to run, because I'm going to be filled with rage in a second. A deep impact DVD! My face, man. Very long oh wait, but tube socks. You didn't tell me there were tube socks. All right, you need to get some stripes on these guys. Oh, I love these tube socks. Come here, tube socks. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, I feel so much better. Sorry for freaking out about the deep impact. The tube socks fixed it all. Thanks, man. Oh. Next question. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> um, mine's not so much as a question, but as a thank you. Um, and I know I'm not the only one, because I've talked to a ton of people about this, especially people that are here today. Growing up, um, you guys were huge in my life. I was bullied very badly, and I know a lot of us fellow nerd, geek, gamers, proud of it now, um, were. And I didn't have a lot to laugh about back then. And coming home and watching Strong Bad, especially, and Teen Girl Squad, which was everything. <laughs> Errol! <laughs> was like the only way that I got to laugh throughout a lot of my childhood. So I just wanted to say thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. That's thank you. I'm not going to answer. You guys kick ass. Thank you so much. That's incredible to hear. And we all, it's nice to hear because we always worry that this guy's too much of a jerk and we don't want, we don't want to influence anybody to act like Strong Bad. He's supposed to, you're supposed to laugh at him. Uh, so that's good to hear. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much. It's nice to know that sometimes when it feels like we're making these dumb cartoons, it's like, what are we contributing to society really? And the fact that it helps people through hard times makes it, makes me feel like what we're doing is not completely worthless. <laughs> That's going to be the, the, the epitaph on Mike's headstone. Not completely worthless. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Hi, how's it going? It's going great. Um, another thank you. You guys were actually one of the conversation topics I had on my first date with my now wife. So nice. Thank you. Love those stories. We're making dreams come true, people. Uh, also, my sister-in-law couldn't be here with us today. I was wondering if you could say hi to my sister-in-law, Becca. Hi. Hi, Becca. Oh, you mean him. Stealing my thunders. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Becca. <laughs> Becca. Becca. Becca looked up. Becca looked up. Becca looked up. Becca looked up. Becca, 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 Becca. Sucka, 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 Becca. The Becca is elsewhere, apparently. <laughs> Hey guys, um, so this is kind of a weird question. Uh, a couple years ago, you guys directed a music video for like one of my favorite bands of Montreal, mm. and that was a really weird convergence of like one of my favorite bands and like you guys. It's like nerding out that like these two forces have now collided, and I get to enjoy that. But I've always kind of wondered how that like happened. Like, how did that come together? Was the video like your design? Like, what what happened there? We're friends with them. The drummer at the time uh, was went to kindergarten with Matt, so we've known one of the members for a long time, and we've known tell him his other band. significance real quick. About oh, and he was the one that coined the phrase "Home Star Runner." Oh, um, he, oh, he, he, he Mark Lemke writer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was uh, so. He was the drummer for of Montreal then, and so yeah, they asked us to make a video. 
And then we, we didn't have a very big budget, so we went to this costume place where somebody got a deal and uh, was just like, hey, we'll take whatever you can get for this much money. They it's like gave us a handful of, yeah. And then we knew a friend that uh, could get us into this awesome old theater for free. So we were like, all right, we'll do kind of a like, you know, bear costume pageanty thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it was pretty, it wasn't slapped together, but it was like we were, we were working with limited resources, which is actually something I, I feel like we probably do best when we have, if I, if I had like a big budget to do whatever I wanted, it would be terrible. Uh, I, need, I need a shoestring and some duct tape. It was brilliant. I love all, everything oh. you guys have done. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you so much. Hey, my name's Donnie, a uh, big fan for years. Um, Donnie with a Y or an IE? It's actually D-A-N-I. Oh, okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Switching it up, I like that. Anytime. Um, my question is, you, you humorously touched upon it on the website a little bit, but with Flash going the way of the dodo, sadly, uh, what plans uh, do you sort of have to preserve your work in sort of its original format with like the Easter eggs and the clickables? What, what do you guys do you, sort of plan for that? Do you have any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> We are, I mean, we're, it's a thing we're actively working on all the time now, trying to find out what's the best uh, way to do it. Um, you can do, I mean, we're like 90% there with HTML5, but you don't really, the files are actually bigger than Flash files, so then if it's the same, it like you kind of start to get into a bandwidth issue, which is just funny, because like, you know, all video content is now just free to host on YouTube or wherever, um, so it's, uh, it's hard. So yeah, we put the ones on YouTube, we try and make when Easter eggs. Yeah, adding Easter, when we do YouTube stuff, we usually add the Easter eggs at the end automatically since you can't click, but. Um, we, try and, we try and make it, we put a fake out thing that looks like a next video is loading, so at least there's some sort of like, you oh, still have to secret. find it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're trying. We're trying to preserve all that. Uh, we I, it's, I had Strong Mad tweet at the uh, Internet Archive to uh, be like, "Hey, uh, you guys like outdated web things? I am an outdated web thing. <laughs> Help preserve me." <laughs> and we'll see. We'll see if we ever get their attention. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh, Scott S. Uh, New York. Um, just wanted to um, ask you guys, with the benefit of time, to reflect. Um, what, it, what character or, or video or game are you uh, most proud of that you guys have worked on? I think for me, the Peasant's Quest uh, adventure game that we made was probably the most fun thing to do. That was the, one of the few sort of um, more than one week uh, as far as <laughs> scheduling how, how we made it. Um, and we pulled it off, and I thought it was not only funny but a good homage, but an actual fun game to play, yeah. too. So to Absolutely. me, it was that. I, uh, it's actually, I like the, we made a CD forever ago uh, with a bunch of like souped up versions of the songs called Strong Bad Sings. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you guys like that, huh? <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so that actually, uh, again, because I, I feel like even if you didn't know our cartoons, I feel like we made some weird songs. I mean, you might not know what the hell you were listening to, but like <laughs> you would probably be entertained. And so anytime we can make something that sort of transcends the usual, you know, thing we kind of do, um, and it's kind of stand, could stand on its own, I, which I hope that, that, that it does. Um, so yeah, so the CD for me. Yeah, one more quick thing. The thing I liked was um, we have this fake metal band called Limousine and this fake indie rock band <laughs> called Sloshy. And the fact that we were able to, they split a seven inch where they covered each other's songs. And so that was super fun to like do a metal, like, I don't know. There was something that was just like genuine about it. Like it was fun and funny, but it was also like, man, this was like, <laughs> I like these songs. <laughs> I like my fake band's covers of the other fake band songs. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hey, guys. Um, continuing on the music notes, uh, we saw Strong Bad and Homestar featured on the High Five Soup album. We had Carl in the Super Show. Um, so when and, when and how did that Aquabats collaboration start, and is there any work with them in the future? Uh, so we met Parker Jacobs, who is Christian Jacobs, the Bat Commander, uh, his brother, and he does, he's done all the art, like he, he like, uh, not all the art, they both do art, but anyways. Uh, so we met him through, he worked Some at Paul Frank at magazine. the time. Magazine, he guys interviewed us for a magazine, right? Yeah. And so, so we knew uh, the family, we knew that like crew, and then um, once uh, Yo Gabba Gabba started, um, I think we just got back in touch with them. We did a little cartoon in a Yo Gabba Gabba, uh, which season is that from? I forget. Um, we made one of the little animations, so then we worked with them then, and then um, 
we just kept in touch with those guys and we all liked each other and we all just kind of became friends long distance and then I actually moved to LA for a few years and then we both wrote and directed some Yo Gabba Gabba episodes and then I wrote and directed some uh, uh, Aquabats and stuff and so we just made pals with those guys. They, they liked Homestar, I mean it was literally 2001 I think we did this interview with Parker Jacobs for some Bay Area like yeah. tech magazine or something. Um, so yes, that's where it came from. We, I, we would love to actually, I, I talked to Christian for the first time in a long time ago, uh, or talked to him for the first time in a long time recently. And um, so yeah, we, we'd love to work with those guys again. That was probably some of the, talking about like working with a budget and stuff, those guys are like right in the, the perfect spot where they, they can get some decent money and they know how to spend it, you know, and they like, they put it to such good use and make just the weirdest crap you've ever seen. So uh, they're super fun to work with. All right, perfect, thank you. Uh, so in addition to the stuff you just mentioned, Matt, I know you've worked on Gravity Falls a little bit. Uh, was there any like, uh, was there any like big challenge you guys had work uh, moving to television from your own stuff in Flash, or was it just a smooth transition? Uh, that was just writing and doing some voices. So I mean, it wasn't uh, it wasn't crazy, but doing longer form stuff for sure. I mean, that was a half hour long show. So yeah, I mean, I we we find that. Our strengths are in shorter form things. We, 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 have, we like longer form stuff. We would like to write at it, but we're maybe just not as good at it. Um, so uh, yeah, so that was more, uh, that, was, that was challenging. It was hard, um, but it was super fun. Uh, and it was great too to work on something like that. And same with like the Aquabats and stuff where I, it was like not my main gig and working on this other thing, but like super happy to have my name on it. Like it was like, I love, love the content from top to bottom and like would gladly be associated with it in any way. Um, so yeah, so it, it took some time, but I eventually got, got past. I think the, the first uh, script I turned in, which was for the episode Boys Crazy, where Mabel clones the boy band, or finds the cloned boy band, um, they, uh, there was something about it's like formatting your script, and it was like, they, Disney uses this kind of formatting, and the program I used, which was not the same program, uses some other thing. So basically I wrote a double episode. I wrote a like 45 minute long episode. <laughs> instead of a 22 minute long episode. And, uh, but, uh, but I still got hired after that. That was like my spec script and then they, they hired me after that. So I guess I didn't screw up too bad. Thank you. Hello, oh, I'm too short for this mic. Um, I'm shaking, I'm so excited to be here. Don't shake! Uh, oh, sorry, strong bad. <laughs> Um, so real quick, I wanted to say um, I am like one of the hugest fans of WarioWare, so thank you for having good taste. Yes! Um, and I know you already did this with Becca, but I promised my friend Maury that um, he loves Strong Bad, and I promised him I'd try to get Strong Bad to say hi to him. Maybe even I love you. Let's so. all say, hi, Maury, I love you. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Hi, hi Maury, I love I you. I love you. Okay. And then my actual question... No, wait, hang on. I didn't give you the bill yet. Oh, okay. I will pay any amount strong bad. No, what's your next one? I'm joking. My next one is in Marzipan it's Answering Machine 17. I know Coach C's crime was probably left unsaid for humor reasons, but I am dying to know, what did Coach Z do? What, did, what crime did he commit? You'll have to wait for the long-form podcast. The, <laughs> like serial that goes into the sordid affair that was the Coach Z debacle. Thank you, We're sir. working with, uh, with WNYC and Radio Lab to, to do a deep dive. I can't wait. Thank That's you so That's not much. true, by the way. I know, sadly. I'm still shaking. Thank you so much for improving. Stop shaking! I'm sorry! Stop it! Thank you so much for improving my life so much. Thank you for improving mine. Oh. Somebody ask Mike something. No, I'm perfectly comfortable staying here in silence. Believe me. Um, just, a, just a quick one, something that I'm sure is on a lot of people's minds. Strong bad. How do you type with boxing gloves on? Everybody get out, quick. Enforcers, get this guy out of here. <laughs> this was in my rider. I put it in my rider. No one can ask about the boxing gloves and the typing. Here, it's like this. <laughs> That's how I type with boxing gloves. Hi. 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 Are there any plans to re-release Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people on any of the modern consoles? Mm. Is, I don't know, does Telltale have a booth? Let's all go march down there with pitch, pitchforks and <laughs> demand, demand it. 
I, I don't actually know. We uh, that, that relationship ended there. It was good. We still love Telltale, uh, but I have no idea. Um, uh, I don't even know. I would love it. So keep uh, email your local Telltale. Uh, write a letter to your, to your Telltale men or Telltale woman and uh, and uh, strongly worded terse letter. A pointed thing. email. Yeah. Vote yes on SBCG5 AP. Okay. <laughs> I think we have time for I think we have time for one more question. Oh, only one more. Oh, strong man, thy dungeon man decapitated me. Avenge me! I can't. What am I looking at? I, a manatee? Is it a stuffed manatee? I am a proud goblin. Fred. All right, I'll avenge you, man. Thank you! Alright. Also finish 20XX. I will! Yay. This year! Sometime in 2018! Level okay. 10 of Stinko Man will finally come out, I promise. Yay. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Alright, so let's do one more. Okay. <laughs> th 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 thanks for not being a real question, so that I'm allowed to ask mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I remember earlier you mentioning that like you didn't really want to do things like uh, blogging about the process and oh man, making flash cartoons is so hard. But uh, have you ever considered doing like uh, while you're working live streams? Because I've noticed that that's something, uh, sort of a trend that uh, animators have been picking up as of late to uh, sort of try to stay afloat in the current <laughs> YouTube scene. One time we did a time lapse of us working on an email and it yes. was cr crunched down to just a couple minutes and even that wasn't interesting. Yeah, that was boring. Watch. Watching us like work, yeah, uh, two minutes of us. The problem is that like flash animation is just so much less glamorous than like actual like frame by frame animation by real animators that can do fluid animation and not the crap that we make. Uh, so it's, uh, we've considered it, but we really, I mean, we we used to have friends back in the day that'd be like, I want to be there the night you guys like make a strong bed email and be like, okay, there's going to be like an hour of fun when we like come up with the stuff and then 18 hours of Mike and Matt with headphones not speaking. <laughs> Uh, I mean, sure, but they'd be there for you, but whatever. Well, they, they right. well if, we can, if we can make our, our, our process uh, look cool and fun, we'll do like playthroughs of the Trogdor game or something like that. We'll do something that's visually... There's no secrets to what we do. I'm afraid you'll watch it and you'll just be like, that's all they do to make these? I'm not watching this anymore. <laughs> I could do that. I, I feel like it's, it's more of the, uh, the, 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 like, the sort of community uh, interaction with the, with the viewers and stuff is more... Hey, well, Strongbad's been doing skills of an artist lately. Uh, yeah. So Strong we'll do the liaison. He'll do, a, he'll do a live stream of how he does skills yeah, He'll watch us. Eh? Nice. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, man. You, you Thank know. you very much. Thanks. All right, Squid Man. So, um, I was wondering, what, what's the story behind the little girl at the start of the um, latest uh, <laughs> April Fool's tune? For the next April Fool's Day? <laughs> it's not yeah. Mike. It's not Mike. Uh, that is a human uh, child. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe you'll see her again. I don't know. She may be kind of like the, like, the omniscient character like that duck a muck cartoon uh, where the animator messes with uh, Daffy uh, and she keeps showing up and just whatever she says happens in the world. Um, that was that that was recorded though four years ago in response to the first April Fool's thing we had made. It was like the first cartoon we'd made in a really long time um, where the characters like Homestar like wakes up and, and starts uh, making a cartoon again. And, um, and that was recorded right after that. So the person was like telling us like, for the next April Fool's thing, you should do this. Um, so, uh, so then we used it. So I kind of want to go back and see if there's more found audio from that person <laughs> and try and make cartoons out of it. Um, but yeah, keep, she may even get a name, that character at some point. So stay tuned. <laughs> there might be more than one girl character in the Homestar Inner Universe, All if right, you can believe uh, it. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jacob and I, uh, the question I was going to ask was actually taken by somebody else in line.
But I do have a. I do have. This is your backup. <laughs> B team question. I'm actually no no. I am actually a big They Might Be Giants fan, oh, and I yeah. was sure. Me too. And I, was very, and I was very happy to find out that you guys use their songs, and I was wondering, would you, would that ever would something like that ever happen again with a band I at least no. Um. <laughs> or if or in a oh, I don't know how to take with that. They Might Be Giants on its own. I don't know all the bands you know, so. <laughs> Uh, we hope so. We still we know those guys, and we're uh, we we hang like we go see them when they come to Atlanta, and we hang out and stuff, and uh, we'd love to collaborate with them again. They're busy, busy dudes. Um, but if that happened, we we would love that. Um, and I don't think we burned any bridges there. No, I think they we, they still answer still emails. Uh, right. So uh, yes, there's a chance. I suppose we'd love to do something with them again. All right, that's awesome. And uh, my. My brother is also a big fan. What's your so brother's freaking name? <laughs> I'll say it already. Come on, there's people in line. It's Frederick, it's, it's Jimmy, Elliot. James. It's Elliot. 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 <laughs> Elliot. Elliot. Okay, say hi. That's to all Elliot. you get. Say hello. <laughs> I love you all. Tell Elliot I love them. I think we literally have about two minutes left. Oh, okay. Oh, um, so my question Talk is... Talk fast. Oh, uh, it's about... No uh, pressure. <laughs> a rather um, small detail that probably isn't worthy of a question. Um, but I was wondering, uh, why is the Soviet Union such a theme in a lot of your jokes? Because we grew up in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Go, quick, 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 quick. Quick. What is your preferred animation program? Um, computer of any sort? Flash. We still phone. use Flash. Same thing. Animate Adobe Animate CC 2018 on a MacBook Pro. Uh, but I think I heard it's more stable on Windows. Hi, I'm Jeff, and um, I was about to ask the same question as how strong that type is with this boxing game. <laughs> Get him out! Get him out now! Don't have time for this. I have that is Homestar Runner related to Homestar anyway? Like, is he biologically related to him at all? I don't, I don't I, again, I think you're, I think there's a long form podcast that we can go into. <laughs> I'll talk to you about it afterwards. We'll work on it together. Go on, thank you. All right, so we, we're unfortunately at time and we gotta clear oh. out the next room. I love you, guy, standing at the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever your brother's name is, hi. Thanks everybody, hi. Thanks, Strong Pat. Thank you guys so much. Uh, for Thanks, everybody. Out. Thank you, Pax uh, East, for having us. Hopefully, we can come back someday. Uh, <laughs> Trump no board game, kickstart late summer. Uh, check it out. We make, we, we, Strong Bad has a Twitter feed, Strong Bad Actual. We make stuff every week on that. And uh, we'll keep we putting up cartoons. cartoons every couple months. Yeah. Thank you for being fans. Thanks, everybody. Have fun. Be safe. Please be patient with us.